But one of the guys came in, he's like, I got a kind of a bout of depression going on right now. I said, everybody in here is depressed, but I think we have a preset amount of movement in our body. In those times of depression, is it more helpful to go off your diet. The hard thing about food is it's not enough to be good on Monday. Yeah, motion is a lotion. They say they're fairly happy. They don't work out. Do you think that person's lying? <laughs> Huberman, he's probably got rules about what kind of amino acids he's going to ingest before he jerks off. Nerd alert. <laughs> Before he jerks off, he caught me on that one. <laughs> I didn't expect that. 17 minutes of sunlight it's good. and uh, L-tyrosine mm -hmm. and leucine combination before he whacks off. But it has to be the perfect amount of like water too. It can't be too much, too little, because then that messes up the uh, trajectory of mm. the shot that comes out. So. Yeah, and then what's that uh, hormone that you produce, like, once you're done? Like, what's that? Prolactin? It's, it's like, uh, oh, yeah, well, there's prolactin's in there, too. <laughs> there's, like, when you have an orgasm, there's uh, oxytocin. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oxytocin. So <laughs> a little nappy poo. You take tyrosine, it will help block some of the ox. I don't know, making it. He does have, I think we have this on our, our YouTube Like a fucking beaten channel. off protocol? Yeah, for the refractory period to uh, minimize that. Dang. So what you just imagined is actually hey, true. How about we expand the refractory period so that you, like, you just fuck once and you don't care about it anymore. <laughs> and, and call it a month. God, you know how much that would help my brain? <laughs> we Talk get, about super brain. We'd get a lot of work done. I'd be smart. Dude. Yeah. It's productive as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to stop cussing. Somebody did mention on the previous Saturday school that if we just keep the F-bombs down to a minimum or get rid of them, they can listen to this with their family. Otherwise, they can't. Dude, what's wrong with us? We're a bunch of animals. I don't know. I mean, I'm like, I was. Can we just like, get them bleeped? We can, but it takes a little bit of work on my part. Oh, <laughs> there's not like a bleep. There's not, not an like, auto. Well, I mean, there probably is. Does some, it on IG? There's some auto AI bleeping software and stuff. But I don't you know. All right. I won't swear. I'm going to try not Let to. Let me know when we're going. Are we going? We're going. All right. We're gone. We're going to cut down on the cussing. Good luck. We had a guy walk in the gym. On Saturday, and welcome to another episode of Saturday School. Uh, don't forget, it's a double E at the end of that, Saturday. Once mm -hmm. you get to be my age, folks, you start talking like that. You say Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you start wearing weird pants that no one else can find <laughs> that are like some sort of old golfer pants. Yeah, where do those come from? I don't know. They're like, and uh, like the old coaching shorts, mm -hmm. those disgusting, I think they're like the brand is like bike. <laughs> they're like gray and like they have a bunch of different colors but they have like they're they're gross like yeah. why would anybody wear those what are those for they're they're the ultimate like oh you got that at like the discount like ross tj mm -hmm. maxx store but since you're filthy rich it's like oh those are expensive that's where cool. can you find where, see if you can look those up those are gross <laughs> well i know because they're gonna come up a biker football shorts, coach but. always wore those but that was the brand i think like bike b-i-k-e i think but i don't know Wow. They're like polyester. <laughs> and then old ladies have like their own polyester pants huh. that they wear. Bike athletic. What? Is that what they it is? They make these look really good, but I don't know. If that's oh, those don't look bad. Yeah, yeah they have like the, nice. but I'm talking like short, <laughs> the I know short, short, oh, like yeah. coaching shorts. Yeah, you're talking about these. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joe Gibbs. <laughs> Yeah, what what are those? I don't know. Me and <laughs> they and look you, like yeah. they have no fold, no give. They're not four way stretch. They're not even one way stretch. They're just there. Those are awful. <laughs> Good lord! All right, so we had a guy walk into the gym <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah, you're zooming on that. Yeah, <laughs> male camel toe. Yeah, yeah. Remember, this is supposed to be family oriented today. <laughs> yeah, we're talking animal at the zoo. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We already got off topic. <laughs> one of the guys walked into the gym, and he's one of the bigger gentlemen that we have here at ST. We got a handful of guys that are pretty heavy, and um, they've all been doing a really good job. You know, Russell Buddy, uh, along with a couple other guys, have lost 50 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds. It's been really, really neat to see. Uh, but one of the guys came in, and he also trains with uh, Charlie Zamora as well. But uh, he came in, and he was just kind of in a little bit of a funk. And I, I always say good morning to him. He was in our store, which is right before you get into the actual gym of Super Training Gym. 
And I said, hey, man, how's it going? And he's like, not so good. Mm. He's like, I got a kind of a bout of depression going on right now. But he's like, I made it in here, you know. And so I said, well, welcome to Super Training Gym. And I just kind of held my hand up and mm-hmm. like pointed it out to the, the sea of people that were already exercising. I said, everybody in here is depressed. <laughs> you know, we're all in here trying to work out something or work through something. Mm. Uh, and that's what I think about exercise. I think exercise is a way for you to work things out. And we're trying to either like block a form of depression or anxiety uh, or we are trying to work through a current bout of depression or anxiety mm-hmm. when you're lifting. Yeah, it's definitely, um, even if you aren't necessarily feeling it, it it's like a preventative, preventative mm-hmm. maintenance. Because I know if I've ever gone through a spell of where I'm, like, I'm just not being consistent, I, I kind of wear it on my you know exterior. My wife will look at me after a good workout and be like, that's the first time you smiled in like two weeks. <laughs> And I'll be like, whoa, you know, the first time she said that it hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, like, it like made me more depressed, you know, cause I'm like, ah, I gotta get back to the gym. But yeah, for me, you know, if I'm in a good spot, it, it, it does make me feel better, but it also just, it, it's like a, like a good maintenance, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think if people maybe don't feel like they like, oh, I don't need that. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxious or whatever, but like, I don't know, it can be used as like a preventative because like we all have bad days. Mm-hmm. I just feel like when I go to the gym where I, you know, roll on the mats, I have way less bad days. And I, I don't know, that's pretty special. I think so too. And that's what you're trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to have more good days than bad. And we're not expecting people to always feel amazing. I think that's kind of unrealistic as well. Uh, something that I've noticed with myself is that I think that I have inside of me, and I think everyone else has this inside of them too, I think there's a certain amount of steps and there's a certain amount of movement that's required of the human body. And this is, again, from my own perspective, but I believe that this is true of everybody. I believe that if you can kind of imagine that there's like a step count in your head or some sort of movement tracker in your head, almost like your Apple Watch tracks tracks a bunch of different things. It can track your everything from your heart rate to your steps to, you know, it can track all kinds of stuff. Even your phone can track like your steps. But I think we have a preset amount of steps, amount of movement in our body. And if you don't get to that, I think it builds a lot of angst and builds a lot of nervousness and and builds up. It's a buildup of extra energy. They say that um, obesity or gaining body fat is your energy toxic. You have an energy toxicity going on. You consume too much energy. Now it doesn't know where to go. And now it just stores and hangs around in your body. I think the same exact things happen with our feelings, your feelings of angst, depression, these things that can be uh, negative stressors to us. If you don't work them out, then they hang around your head, not necessarily your body. They hang around, they clog up your mind. They don't allow you to make the correct decisions. And what I think is really interesting is that when, when you're not doing that much and then you go from not doing that much to doing something you sometimes will feel exhausted and feel like you did so much. But as you work your way through that over a period of time, you'll be able to take on more and more stuff with more and more efficiency. And you'll find more like equanimity and tranquility through that process. Like that process will be smoother and smoother. Almost the more that you take on Mm -hmm. over time, you do want to be careful with how many things you agree to do and how much, um, Andrew, probably for the first time ever told me no the other day. Cause I was like, oh, let's do it. <laughs> and that's just, that's just the way that it is. You have to tell people, no, people have to be accepting of somebody saying no, because that's important too. But the reason why you take a day off from the gym or the reason why you might take a day off from a run is not necessarily because you're going to overtrain. It's to reset your day. It's to be able to catch up on whatever the other things are. Most people that have a nine to five, they don't really have time to, I know people don't really have to go to the bank anymore, but there was a time where you had to actually show up at places in person and you had to bring back your video to Blockbuster video, (laughs) rewound, and you had to, uh, you had to go to the bank or the DMV and all these places are conveniently only open the same time as when your working hours are normally. And so people 
in their regular work schedule, they don't have time to go to the dentist and all these things. And so people would try to figure out how to do this on their lunch break, or maybe they would ask for a day off of work. A day off of work is actually just an introduction of you catching up on household chores and a lot of other things that you need to do. So for me, if I was to have a day that's like off of lifting, it doesn't, it's not really because I'm worn out or can't lift or I'm too sore or I'm worried about my nervous system. It's more like, let's take this day to reset. Maybe there's going to be a little extra food in this day. Maybe there's going, maybe I'm going to be able to get to bed a little bit earlier. Maybe I'm going to be able to set myself up for tomorrow a lot better because what ultimately what you're trying to have your exercise do is you're trying to have your exercise work for you like a slingshot, like the thing that you pull the rock back with. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you pull that back, you're getting so much energy, right? But you don't want to pull it back so far that the damn thing snaps. You're trying to pull it back far enough to where whatever you're aiming at, you'll be able to hit. So you pull it back and you pull it back and you pull it back. It stores a lot of energy and then pew, it propels the rock forward. So that's, you can think of that rock being like you propelling yourself uh, forward into and towards the goals that you have in life. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to create an energy abundance that you can lean on, especially like in your times of need, like if somebody dies or if something tragic or weird or crazy happens, the best place that you can go to in those times of need is to snap back like that slingshot and go right back into what it is that you're used to doing. Because if you start to fall back into old habits, you might find yourself in trouble and you might be, you know, entering this space that people always talk about as a dark space. I was, I had a, you know, mm -hmm. those were dark times. You hear people say it on the podcast a lot and we don't pry too much, but you're like, what the fuck does that? We know what they mean. Sorry, there's an F-bomb. <laughs> what the F does that mean? Um, it, well, it means that they went through they went through a rough patch and they probably don't really want to talk about it too much, but I'm imagining that that was a moment where they were depressed. And the question that I would ask is, you know, I, it, I said differently than this because you want to be sensitive to what the person's talking about. In those times of depression, is it more helpful to go off your diet or, or is it more helpful to stay on your diet? Is it more helpful to go against, you said that you want to be leaner. Is it more helpful for you to <clears throat> get further away from your goals while you already don't feel good about yourself, while you're already upset? Or does it feel better to take a couple steps forward towards it? I get it. I understand why you ordered the pizza. I can totally understand that. It makes a lot of sense. But you're going to start to order the pizza every night. You're going to start getting out of the gym often and have that become a cyclical thing. Or are you smart enough to recognize that the RX for this is for you to lean into these things stronger and not turn everything into like a celebration and a release? Mm. You know, recently I ran the furthest I ever ran, which was uh, 23 miles. And, you know, when I was running the miles, I was like, you know what? I think when I'm done with this, I'm at like mile 18. I'm like, this is like, this is going to be pretty challenging. And as I was kind of wrapping that up, I'm like, I'm going to go get a pizza and like, and then as I started finishing up and as I got to mile 19 and 20 and 22 and so on, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home and I'm going to run the same play that I always run. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat meat and I'm going to eat rice because I'm going to lean into this, lean into this even further. And I'm going to get better faster than I even expected because there's no reason to set myself back after I already ran that far. I just want to keep moving forward. And you hear like David Goggins will say people uh, will only go, I think he says like 60 to like 60%. Mm -hmm. and, and they think that that's working really hard. And it, it can be like if you take a chunk of 60% of yourself and put it into jujitsu or running, that is a lot, but just think to yourself, well, what happens if I put in 65%? What about 70%? What about 80%? Like you start putting that kind of effort in and you start to end up with almost like an 80, 20 rule. Cause I think the 80, 20 rule allows you to have balance with your family. And you know, David Goggins is so far the other way. I think a lot of people would say, I admire everything the guy does and that's amazing. But, um, I would like a little bit, it, 
he he might feel like he has balance in his life because him working that hard could represent balance for him. But for most people, I think they would think if I get that obsessed with running, that's not going to feel very good for me. So I'd like to be, you know, just a not, you know, a couple notches down from uh, where he is. And I think that's reasonable to kind of go a little bit more after the 80, 20 rule, but you got to be really cautious that you don't fall yourself into a slump because you took a day or two off. You have to be really conscious of, okay, um, you know, uh, I'm dealing with these things that happened in my life. Like when my mom died, it's like I did a podcast on the same day, Mm -hmm. you know, I just talked about her. Um, maybe some people think that's crazy. That's what felt right for me. That's what felt good for me is to talk about her, talk about her life and to just move on. You know, next day I'm going to lift. Of course, I'm going to think about her. Of course, I'm going to honor her life. And my brother and I, and my dad, we all talk about her all the time. We still think about her all. It's not like, it's not like we're like, oh, that's over with. She's gone. Can't communicate with her anymore. We think about her all the time. But we are also going to move forward with our own lives. That's what a mother does. A mother is trying to uh, trying to encourage a child and trying to nurture a child so that the child can go off and do what? Be on their own. Mm-hmm. And for me, the healthiest thing I can do and the best thing I can do a lot of times to keep myself forging forward and keep myself fired up is to just run the same play. And uh, my football coach used to always say, run the same play, but let's just do it to the other side. And I think that if you can kind of keep that mindset in your life here and there, you don't have to really be fancy, but maybe the play that you ran, maybe you love bench pressing. So... (laughs) So maybe instead of a barbell bench, you just run the same play, but you run it to the other side and you do incline dumbbell presses because your shoulder hurts or maybe you wear a slingshot. You do something slightly different than what it is that you already like to do, but it's just enough different to where it doesn't have any negative impact on you. You might still be able to gain the three yards that you need every single play or three and a half yards every single play to be able to get the first down, to be able to continue to be in the game in the first place. So that's what I think. I think exercise is massively important for our mindset. And I think that's why so many of us get addicted to it. Absolutely. Um, I I really want to go back to what you were talking about, like, you know, um, getting the comfort food because like, uh, like, oh, I'm depressed. Instead of going to work out, I'm just going to kick my shoes off, order the pizza. And, you know, a lot of people don't know anything other than that. Right. That's that's kind of that's the game plan right there. Um, but one thing that I was actually talking today on the mats about was um, somebody was saying they wanted to come to the open mat before class, but they messed up because mm. their alarm clock didn't go off when they thought it was supposed to go off. And like, isn't that the worst where you, you tell yourself the night before, like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then what happens? You don't do it. Mm. You know, you end up sleeping in like that's to me, that's one of the worst feelings ever where you wake up and it's like, nah. That clock's wrong. Like it's, I probably just didn't daylight savings or something. Like it's not actually six a.m. It's actually five a.m. Like I got time. Nope, you you fucked up. Mm-hmm. You messed up. <laughs> so like when you do that with food, right? Like it, it's it's kind of the same feeling where you're like ah, like this is gonna set me back mm-hmm. when I was not going in the right direction. Anyways, can you talk a little bit more about that? I know you just you you did get into it a little bit, but like even further because for a lot of people. Uh, oh, my, my knee hurts. I'm going to get in the hot tub. It's like, well, have you tried the cold tub? I don't want to. That's a little bit too hard. Mm. It's like, okay. Uh, I want to lose, lose weight. Okay. Um, like what are you having for dinner? I I just don't have time. I'd rather just go get something to eat. So that way I can plan something Mm. for tomorrow when tomorrow's not going to happen. Um, can you talk about how that's going to like, how, (laughs) how taking the easy route is just going to make you feel worse as you move mm. along. The hard thing about food is a lot of times it actually works, you know, <laughs> like it works, especially in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's other things that work in the moment as well. Um, that just might not be in your best interest overall. And it might not go along with your goals. When you, when we're talking about, um, you are talking about something like food, you know, if you are craving like pizza and stuff like that, it's, I think it's, a uh, it's a tough thing to kind of figure out because you probably should address it at some point. You might want to look at like why, like why are you craving these things? And again, to go back to the day off, the day off isn't, 
the day off isn't a vacation from your goals. The day off isn't is the day off is to set you up even better for your goals. It's to strengthen and reinforce your goals. So let's say there's a day where I'm like, I'm not running, I'm not, I'm not lifting, I'm gonna chill at home, I'm gonna maybe just go in a hot tub for today, gonna do like a mobility drill or two, I'm gonna do some like myofascial release, and today is like just gonna chill. Well, on that like quote unquote day off, that's where I'm thinking about it's let's say it's Tuesday, that's when I'm thinking about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What's gonna make this week stronger? And the best thing for me is to start to think about my meals and where my food's going to come from and what it's going to look like. Maybe I got, like, I personally don't mess with a lot of meal prep because I don't really need to because I eat when I'm home. I usually eat in the morning. I eat later. Than I, we've talked about it on many podcasts before. But if you're somebody that needs to carry around a little bit of food for you to be able to manage your diet better, that's what you do on your day off. Your day off is a day for you to go shopping. Your day off is for you to prep those meals. So how do you avoid falling into the trap of having this craving of pizza? You do so by having other good options around. And when those options are there and when they're still convenient, you most likely are going to choose them and you're going to say, screw it. I'm just going to go in this direction. I already spent the time and I already spent the money. I already prepared those meals. They're already sitting in my freezer. All I have to do is pop them in the microwave and it's, and it's done. So you want to try to, how can you, you know, how do you figure that out, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things of like your, your life as a whole, you always want to try to make things. I have running shoes in my car, like they're in the back of my car. Mm -hmm. I have socks in the back of my car. That's because I could be here at super training and uh, at the, at the power project studio and stuff like that. And I could get carried away. I could, I could, I could lift, I could podcast with Kenny, I could podcast with Andrew and then podcast with Encima. And I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, it's like 5.30. <laughs> well, crap, I still have like a 40 minute run that I'm supposed to do today. Uh, well, well, maybe I should go home. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I go home, it's the kiss of death. If I go home, there's too much comfort at home. My wife is there, my kids are there. All I want to do at that point in the day is see them, hang out with them, cuddle, snuggle with them, uh, kiss my dog and just kind of eat, you know, eat, eat my meals, um, that I've been kind of getting hungry for all day. Right. So I, how do I avoid that? I avoid that by being prepared. I have, uh, my meat bag somewhere. I just put it <laughs> off to the side there. I have carnivore snacks with me. So I have food. I have a steak shake protein with me. I have some coffee, I have energy drinks available, I have Kratom available. Like if I need any of these extra boosts mm -hmm. to encourage me to go and do the thing that I'm supposed to do, that I know that I'm supposed to do uh, later, then I have all the resources around me. I don't need to go off plan food wise because I have everything available to me. One thing I think that probably separates me from a lot of the people that you may see some of the influencers online, I'm not going to really say their names or anything, but I think some of these guys are so admirable. They seem to be so locked into what they do. And I don't know how much people know about me because I don't share this. There's, there's certain things that I like can't share, but I'll try to share this here a little bit. Um, I can't even explain to you guys like what it means or what it is to have kids and to have children that are like the kids that are just nice. Like my mm -hmm. kids are nice. They're kind. They are, um, they're both, they're both sweet. They're both a lot of fun to be around. And when I went to Seattle, you know, I'm not cooking up like 96% lean ground beef and then, you know, only putting salt on it and just eating that. Um, we went on like an eating tour. We did a bunch of just an eating tour. How fat does that sound, right? <laughs> it sounds like fun. Yeah. It was, sounds like a lot of fun. Exactly. It was a lot of fun. And sometimes you have to have the ability to be able to go into some of these things and be able to do some of these things. We, I went to the store and I, I had Quinn laughing at me because I tried to buy ice cream was my excuse. Um, but even fatter than that, instead of buying cookie dough ice cream, I bought straight cookie dough <laughs> that was handmade at this place. Well, 
And I was like, and Quinn's like, well, she's like, then you found out it was cookie dough. She's like, you didn't have to just eat the cookie dough. Like, and I was like, yes, I did. Like that's, I love cookie dough is like my favorite thing, <laughs> but we had the greatest time. Like, uh, I don't know, you know, how you just get silly when you're hanging around people oh, yeah. that you care about and that you love or your friends or whatever. And it gets a little later at night and we, I had a couple, couple drinks and stuff and we're just being silly, eating weird food and stuff. And uh, we're watching some movies, and I think Quinn asked my wife for, she's like, oh, can you grab my phone? I think it's, like, on the side of the bed. And Andy went to reach for it. She knocked something over, and water went flying everywhere. And then Quinn, Quinn was Miss Giggly Pants, so she was <laughs> laughing her ass off. So we just had a great time. Now, if I don't, I don't have to participate in any of that. I don't have to really eat the same way, but it just makes everything different. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm sitting there with just, like, a Quest bar, I could do that. You know, if I was still, if I was still really heavy, that's what I would do, but I'm in better shape now and I can afford to do something different. I don't have to be as locked in. And so I was just like enjoying, uh, the moment with them and it was, it was unbelievable. So there's like certain things. I don't put that kind of stuff on social media. You're not going to really see that. I don't think it's fair with the ages that my kids are for me to subject them to 600,000 Instagram followers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I don't, I don't mess with any of that, but that's my life. Like people don't see that. They just see me lift and see me run. And that's, I'm not blaming anybody. That's, that's what I show. That's what I share. I don't share this whole other side to me where I am way more calm, way more chill, way more relaxed than you would probably ever think. By looking at my Instagram, sometimes you might think I'm a complete maniac and that I'm always just driving and striving and like clenching my teeth and clenching my fist and white knuckling everything and just trying to be my fucking best <laughs> effing best <laughs> at everything all the time. And yes, I do like getting better. Um, but I also love to relax and I love being with my family. And I, that time I had in Seattle this last year and this year, even, um, with last year, we only went with Quinn, but this year we went with Jake and Quinn it's just so much fun. This, those, those two, they trash talk each other and then they trash talk me and then they, they'll jump on and my wife and they'll <laughs> trash talk her. And it's just like, you know, one can get away with anything. Like you just, oh, man. You know, yeah, everyone's getting, everyone's getting roasted <laughs> yeah. from all angles. And every once in a while, someone gets hurt and then it gets uh. even kind of, it gets even kind of funnier, you know, <laughs> and sometimes it'll get a little quiet and we're just, I don't know, we're just BSing and having fun and it's, it's a great time. So there are times where you just got to sometimes just put that diet to the side. But as I said before on the show, if you don't have any, this is, this is, um, eating disorders aside. So if you're someone that has had any sort of eating disorder, if you're obese, I believe that's an eating disorder. Um, eating disorders aside and, and really having a crazy struggle with your food if you don't have room to take a day or two off your diet and just to kind of like let your hair down and kind of hang out and, and do whatever, then I think something's wrong with like your training, your rest, a lot of these other things that you do during the day, it's not working really well for you. So you need to kind of, don't forget the gym is a place where A, you work, you work things out in your mind, but B, the whole reason to be there is to build muscle mass. You don't really do much else in the gym. You can do your cardio and you can do some of these things. But when you lift weights, you're not only burning calories and burning sugar, but you're also building muscle mass. And so over time, let's say you're 200 pounds and you want to be like 170. Over time, you want to shift your body fat. Let's say you have like 40 pounds of body fat on you. Over time, you want that body fat to go down uh, slowly but surely and also gain muscle mass so you don't necessarily have to lose 40 pounds of body fat if you lost 10 pounds of body fat and gained about three to five pounds of muscle you'll look like almost a completely different person altogether and that's exactly what we're trying to do in the gym and those are the things that set you up for success and they allow you to occasionally take a little break from your diet the other thing I want to say is that, again, with that off day that I keep talking about, if you can, if you can reload and reset, not necessarily with just an off day, 
but with a good night of sleep or some sort of resting habits or some sort of recovery habits, then you, you're going to, you're not going to really want to cheat on your diet as much. Maybe you still want it. Maybe because like things just pop up in your head. You always see like a new Carl's Jr. commercial or whatever. Mm -hmm. So these things, they still kind of pop up, but fatigue makes cowards of us all. And fatigue tends to shift you into a mindset of making just poor decisions. If you're not tired, if you're not tired and it's 3 p.m. and you just got done with with a bunch of work here at the studio and stuff, Andrew, and you you didn't, um, I don't know, maybe you did roll this morning, but you're like, wife's not going to be home till 6. I'm going to go to another class. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if you're not tired, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to call up Charlie. I know Charlie said he's going to go to a later class. I'm going to go with him. Or Seema said he's going to go to a later class. Why not? Mm-hmm. I feel great. If you're tired, mm. even if they called you and they're like, hey, man, you want, you'd be like, uh, I'll have to check in with you later in the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, that currently happens right now. Not necessarily like later on in the day, but like tomorrow morning, I already got invited to another open mm-hmm. mat. And I'm like, dude, I'm tired right now. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get enough sleep to go do it again tomorrow. I can get a little bit extra sleep and get a lift in instead. I think I'm going to do that. You know, and be- see, by doing something like that. You kind of, um, you give yourself like home field advantage. Yeah. I like to oh, look, yeah. you know, you, you, you get in the rest and you stay in your routine that you're used to. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, w- w- one of the things that was said in this podcast more recently, which I think is one of the coolest quotes is somebody said, um, once you know the rules, then you can break them. Mm-hmm. And th- w- once you know the rules and once you understand like how much energy is it going to pull from me to go to this other class, like you already know that. So you know that you can kind of break the rules, but you know that it's also a mistake to break the rules too hard. And so you can't just like haphazardly be like, yeah, man, oh, hey, and Seema, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with you to San Jose and roll with those. Mo-. <laughs> like that's going to be, you need to plan that out a couple weeks in advance, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a bunch of mutants down there and you could hang and you could do it because you guys already figure out ways to roll with people that are mm-hmm. in, in different categories and mm-hmm. stuff, right? But mm-hmm. It's like it needs some thought because it's a long way to travel and the amount of nerves and shit they have meeting all these new people. You already know what a monster uh, Fowler is that's been on our mm-hmm. show before. So you're like, let me let me think about this a little bit more and put you're going to have to put a certain amount of time and energy even just in the days before just to anticipate going there. Yeah. E- even just um, talking to and seeing like, Hey, like, I think I want to go and just like check it out. Like just to go and like maybe take pictures or something because I'm like, I, I think that's, I mean, like we can say like, Oh, like uh, you, Mark, we can bench, but we'll pull the weights off for me. Yeah. It's a little bit different because it's a comp school and mm-hmm. you know, their professor is like pretty hardcore. And he was just explaining like, yeah, there's a, there's like a white belt or two. He's like, but when I roll with them, if you just told me they were like purple or brown, I would have believed you because mm. they're fucking savages. And I'm like, oh, I mean, they're effing savages. Mm, yeah. I'm like, that's, dude, that's crazy. So yeah, in time, I already mm-hmm. I explained to him, I'm like, hey, like at some point I would love to go with you and get some rounds in over there. I'm like, but I know I'm not ready and I don't want to like slow anybody down. And of course, everybody would be like, no, 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 no come. I'm like, but you guys are on a mission right now. <laughs> and I understand. It also is going to pull you in the wrong direction too. Like, so let's just say let's just say that school is accepting of kind of newer people and stuff but you go down there and like you know they're kind of showing you what it's about like no one's trying to like really mm-hmm. hurt you or anything but they're trying to show you like there's a certain intensity to yeah. this school so you go there on a wednesday and you're trashed you can't even get back to practice till next wednesday yep because you're shot you know because oh, yeah. and that's happened to me with workouts and stuff um working out with some pro bodybuilders and Um, even just being a little bit older and, and working out with some really high level power lifters, like, man, that, that wasn't smart because that threw, like, I wasn't in, I didn't stay in my lane. Like I should have just stayed when I lifted with those guys, I already did my lifts. My lifts are already, uh, they're already up on the scoreboard Mm -hmm. and they'll be there forever. And I don't need to necessarily try to beat someone in a particular workout. But if you do go for those things, you have to realize there's a cost there's a cost to every single thing that you do. So the extra mile that you might want to run in your training, the few extra rolls that you might want to do, it's not, it's not enough to be good on Monday. It's not a good, it's not enough to be good 
you know, just for one day or for one workout, oh man, that was sick. You just went all in. You were, you were there for two hours straight and you Mm -hmm. kept taking on all these different people. And it's like, well, Andrew, where were, I didn't see you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like what happened? Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I don't know. I just, I got pretty sore. So I missed, and that now that Monday workout, it's not, it's not nearly as impressive and it would have been so much better if you were able to follow it up with other workouts. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that when you don't, when you feel good that you can't go in a little deeper, but I used to call it garbage sets when it came to lifting. You know, um, is there zero cost to, you know, hitting up, like running the rack at the end of a workout for some curls and just doing tricep extensions until your triceps fall off? (laughs) Yeah, there there is. Like you might not really think that there is. You're like, oh, it's just blood flow. I'm just getting. No, that that takes energy. It's taking ATP. It's taking creatine. It's it's somewhat hitting your nervous system, even with the lighter weights. So you have to be the extra sprint you want to do on the bike on your way out the door. If it doesn't really fit your goals, there's not a lot of great reasons that you can point to to do them. Power Project family, if you're trying to increase your muscle mass, if you're trying to lose body fat, if you're trying to stick to a nutrition plan, if you're trying to get fit, pretty much if there's anything you're trying to do for your health, we know that sleep is the biggest determining factor to help you get from point A to point B. That's why we've been sleeping on eight sleep mattresses for probably more than two years now. And the main reason is the technology behind the Pod Pro. Now, the Pod Pro is like the Tesla of beds. It will change its temperature based off of how you're sleeping during the night. And if you have a partner that's sleeping on the other side, they can have their own temperature settings. We all sleep hot here and I used to wake up in a puddle of my own sweat. That doesn't happen anymore because of the eight sleep mattress and I've been getting the best sleep of my life. Now, if you don't want to replace your mattress, you can just get the Pod Pro cover and you can put that over your current mattress to get all the benefits of eight sleep. But if you also need to replace your old nasty mattress, (laughs) you can get the Pod Pro cover and the eight sleep mattress. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, you guys got to head over to eightsleep.com slash power project and you guys will automatically receive $150 off of your order. Uh, again, 8sleep.com slash power project links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So I wanted to get back to the lecture at hand. Um, uh, what is it about like a workout that can make somebody feel better? I, I've never really heard anybody mm-hmm. explain exactly what's going on. I'm sure Huberman <laughs> said something about it, but as far as like meathead terms, like somebody doesn't feel good, they go to the gym and they do something that doesn't feel good and they leave and they feel better. Mm. What's going on there? Yeah, motion is a lotion. You know, you get get moving, get yourself cruising and you'll you'll feel I mean, there's it's going to be really really rare that you don't feel better. I mean, I guess the only thing I can think of is like uh if it, so if you just felt like not so great because you were like depressed or worried about something or um, feeling overwhelmed and those kinds of things. And you went and you worked out, you'll probably be able to work through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But if you felt like actually sick, then maybe not, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it works out. Okay. But if you're like nauseous or something, that's not a good time to try to go to the gym. But for the most part, a walk, a run, a ride on your bike, even I've even found nostalgic stuff, just music, to be really uplifting when you're not feeling so great. A shower, like a shower to me is like, it's not like a, it's not a, it's not a real, it's not like a movement, but it's an activity. Um, you feel great coming out of the shower. Uh, you feel, you always feel better when you go on a walk. I went on a walk yesterday with my daughter Quinn after we saw the uh, Jordan movie air, really, really cool movie. You guys should check it out. And, um, we were both like kind of just messed up from the movie. You know, we were, you're sitting in the dark for so mm. long and then we came out and it was like 5 PM and now, you know, it's getting to be beautiful out here in California and it was just crazy bright outside. Oh, Quinn's yeah. like, I, Quinn's like, I feel so tired. I was like, I feel dead too. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, let's, let's, uh, let's walk it out, you know? And so we walk, she's like, yeah, walk always makes you feel better. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's easy enough to do. It was just a quick 10 minute walk, but yeah, motion is the lotion. Once you get in motion, it's going to be encouraging, encouraging you to do more motion. It's kind of the way the body works. It reminds me of 
there's that scene in uh, in Twins when Arnold lifts up the back of the car because he's <laughs> like, when the car gets risen to a certain level, the car thinks it's getting towed, so the alarm fall, the alarm shuts down. And the human body, I think, is that way too. Like we have a certain amount of movement that we have to do every day. And if we don't get that movement done, it's alarming to us. It like sets you off. It like, uh, it's almost like you hear a constant like buzzing in your ear. There's, there's some sort of encouragement like, yeah, you should do something. And I think that's what builds up a lot of anxiety. You're sitting there looking on your phone and you're scrolling and scrolling and looking at all these other people and, and all the other people are posting something that they did. Mm-hmm. And you're just sitting there watching the doing over and over again, or the result of the doing, or they have a medal on their chest because they did a jujitsu tournament. They have, they're holding up a prize because they did a run, or <laughs> they're they're showing you how much they lifted for the day. It's all these examples of like, I did this, I did that, or I look great in this bathing suit, or I look great doing this. It's all examples of like a byproduct of things that people either did for a while to get to where they are now, or it's something that they're like, they just did like recently in a, in a given workout. And so rather than like you feeling pumped about it, (laughs) if you just got done with a workout and you looked at that, your mindset would probably be way different. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. They got after it too. Look at that. That's cool. As opposed to you just been kind of frumpy all day and just kind of sitting around all day. And you're like, this guy's the worst, man. He's always yelling. He's always all fired up. And I don't know what he's so excited about. Mm-hmm. Who cares how much he benched? <laughs> I don't give a crap. And you, you know, scroll the next thing and you, you're you derogatory to the next scroll, next scroll. And then hopefully there's some sort of signal. You're like, man, I'm Mr. Grumpy Pants. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm just sitting here like hating on a bunch of people. And that's not, mm-hmm. I'm not normally like that. Like, why do I care? That's cool that they're getting it. I got... You know, if you think about your own life, a lot of times you have most of what you need. Hopefully you're with a significant other that you dig. Uh, If you have children, hopefully you're pretty happy with uh, what they're doing. And if you're not, then that's something you can work on with your significant other to try to make sure that they're heading in the right direction. Um, Most people, despite economics, have a lot of things in common with one another Everyone that I've ever run into pretty much is still trying to figure out the same thing. And everyone's just trying to figure out just how to make it all work. You know, it doesn't matter if you are rich and it doesn't matter if you're working your face off. I think everybody is just trying to figure it out. And I think most people are trying to figure out a way to get more time. How do I have more time? And people that are well off, you would think, um, well, they have bought themselves more time because maybe they could work less. But that's not really the case with most of the people that we know. And even with myself, um, I'm not giving myself more time to do nothing. I'm providing myself more time to do more stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's something I need to, over the next couple years and months, I need to work on a bit to try to like figure out, like when I'm doing something, I need to do it with a lot of efficiency. And then, but you know, that's going to, it's going to take time to kind of uh, work on that. But I think working out in general is an amazing thing and going into the gym and specifically lifting weights, specifically doing like a bodybuilding style workout. You go in the gym and like, here's how it works at super training. You walk in the gym, there's no music on. No one really talks or says much. You say, hi, good morning. How's it going? It's all kind of slow and just whatever. And then you do a set of face pulls. And then you (laughs) hold on to something and get down into a squat. And then you're like, oh, man, I kind of need to roll out my, my hip. So you roll around on the ground, roll out your hip on a med ball. And you pick it up and then you see someone else across the gym doing something. They're already into their workout a little bit. Maybe they're slamming a med ball or doing something. And you're like, I need to pick it up a notch, you know, and you go and you do like a seated row. Now you kind of just made yourself a little bit warm. Then you go to do a, uh, like a dumbbell row. Well, now you just kind of broke a sweat. 
Now you pop your sweatshirt off. Once the sweatshirt thing kind of comes off, you're starting to already feel really good. Then maybe you're like, well, I already got some of that going on. Uh, I'm going to lay down and do some uh, dumbbell bench press. You do a set of that and all of a sudden, boom, a bunch of blood starts to flow to your triceps, your shoulders, your chest. You got all this kind of circulation going on from your toes all the way up to your nose and all the way back down again. And it just feels incredible. Somebody walks in, they're like, dude, what the hell? You look huge. And you're like, whoop. <laughs> like your whole body just, you get so excited, you know, that somebody it's, we should, probably shouldn't be so moved by any comment from anyone, mm -hmm. but it's really nice to be like, someone goes, dude, what the hell's going on? Because that's what you're working for, right? Like you're working on trying to make these muscles bigger. Somebody's in recognition of that. And now you feel better. Now you're encouraged. Like, are you going to stop working out right then? Like, there's no way. You're going to continue <laughs> to work out. Maybe you drag the sled. But most likely you probably got like 40 minutes to an hour of, of some good good workout in. And you feel great. And that's that's kind of the cycle of it. And once you start to feel that, um, you want to hit that feeling again. It's like a drug. Mm -hmm. You want to get that high again. The high, You know, there's a runner's high. A runner's high is a really weird thing. So many people probably have never experienced it, but a high from lifting, I would say that like it takes like three months to be able to figure out how to get that, maybe even less. Mm. You do like a wicked drop set of something and you can figure out how to get a pretty good pump. Once you're able to kind of stay on top of that pump for two or three sets, you got a little bit of like a lifting high going on. Mm -hmm. So if somebody isn't active they say that they're not depressed or anxious. They say they're fairly happy. They don't work out. Uh, with what you said at the very beginning of the podcast, you know, we're all kind of anxious and depressed. Mm -hmm. Do you think that person's lying? I think that a lot of people maybe don't know how good they could feel. That's my own personal feeling is that I also believe that everyone needs to lift. Everyone. Everyone needs to lift. There's too much information out there. There's too much research about the positive impacts of some type of lifting. And we could sit here and argue about the particular ways to lift and to mechanically load your body. But it's undeniable. Um, I think over time, we're going to see more and more people get into exercise all the way from the ages of like five, six, seven years old all the way to 77, 87, 97 years old. And part of the reason for that is I think that sports, much like religion, is unraveling a little bit in this country. And there's football, you know, the head injuries mm -hmm. and things like that. And ultimately, ultimately, so many of us got into all this in, re in a reverse order. Um, we used lifting as an excuse for football. Like, oh, I lift for football. Um, but I think what you're going to see happen is I think you're going to see a lot of people lifting to lift, like exercising and fitnessing just to fitness and not even necessarily for a means to anything else, not necessarily for bodybuilding, not necessarily because you can just do it for the gram if you want. Mm. And I think it's going to be, I pointed this out to my wife the other day. I said, there's still, there's still very, very few women that are celebrities that are, that are using bodybuilding protocols. And to me, that's fucking, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> to me, that's absolutely insane. That's absolutely insane. The women that lift are so hot mm -hmm. is unbelievable. They look great. The women that develop the hamstrings and get the thicker legs and, mm -hmm. Um, ask any guy that remotely digs fitness or sports about a girl with a little bit of muscle on them, what that ends up, what that ends up being in their head. And they're, they're going to tell you, yeah, the girl went from a five to a 7.5 just by doing some deadlifts. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference and we're going to see it to be, uh, more, socially accepted 
for women to have more muscle. You pulled up the picture of uh, Charlize Theron and she just didn't look, mm -hmm. But then she didn't look super flattering in some of the pictures. And then who's that? That's Angela Bassett from back in the day. And Angela Bassett is like in her 60s now and still looks incredible. And she looks amazing. So like this is her now-ish. And so, yeah. yeah, and obviously she's following some type type of bodybuilding protocol back then. I mean, for people listening, the picture is black and white, so it you know, gives you some time reference. But yeah, we pulled up, was mm -hmm. it Charlize? Yeah. In a bathing suit, and because we were just thinking of like, okay. At least the photos we had access to didn't look great. Yeah, because we were like, okay, who, you know, who would we consider to be like in, in great shape? Like that's a pu public figure. And so we're going through, I'm like, oh, Charlize. And I'm like, oh, like, hmm. Like these bathing suit pictures don't look good at all. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. kind of like bummed out. So then we brought up um, Angela Bassett, and it's like, wow, like she's she still looks great. Look it. at uh, like Brad Pitt, like Fight Club uh -huh. versus um, the uh, Superman guy. You know, coming out coming out of the uh, ocean, uh, taking the clothes off the clothespin. Um, how jacked he looks in comparison, like. Fight Club Brad Pitt just I mean he's lean and I know some women dig that but like he just he looks like he's strung out more so than he looks great to me mm -hmm. personally and I think that I think a lot of people would be like yeah man it looks like that guy could eat a cheeseburger or soup. something but you know putting uh, putting bodybuilding into practice I think is is major and I think the the cool thing about bodybuilding is that nearly anyone can do it you can work out in groups. You know, like if we're using machines, me, Andrew, Russell, my brother, and Seema, and Kenny could all work out on the same machine as long as we're not like resting too long in between sets. There's really no problem. Mm -hmm. And you just change the pin and bing, like the weight's done. Mm -hmm. And we can all like do the same rep protocol. We can do the same amount of sets if we wanted to. It's amazing. And I, in fact, today we did a, um, a set with, with Kenny, myself, my brother, and Russell. We were doing like a giant set. We did a tricep push down mixed with some other type of tricep push down mixed with like a tricep extension. And it was just a lot of fun. It was great to get Russell in there moving around like that. And we had fun. And, you know, I think if we can utilize, if we can utilize lifting I think it can be a, a really amazing recipe to help people get out of their funk and to get out of their depression. Because if you can change, if you can change yourself, then I think looking at how to, your perspective on everything else changes so much. You're like, I know myself, I got a lot of ridiculous habits and I was able to take myself from week one to week 12 to hear, that's pretty cool. Hold, hold on a second. I wonder, and I did that without really any nutritional changes. I wonder if I ate more protein like people are telling me. Mm -hmm. I wonder what changes that would make. Because remember, really all we're asking you to do, we're asking people to do two things and they both surround protein. One is to eat protein and one is to break protein down. You're, you don't really break protein down all that well. And uh, anything that's going to be for like hypertrophy, gaining muscle mass via like running or riding a bike or any of those things, it's like not enough. You need to mechanically load the body. And I think everyone can utilize some weight training. And anybody that knows anyone in their family that you think is depressed or in a funk, if you already exercise, see if you can invite them to the gym or... Maybe it's a nephew or maybe it's a cousin. Maybe you could say, maybe the next time it's their birthday, you couldn't buy them a session or two of a personal trainer. You never know that like the little thing that you might do for somebody that might change their life forever. Maybe it's somebody in the family that's resistant to some of the suggestions that you've made in the past. And you say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to do this anyway. And even if they think it's kind of funky that I, hired a trainer that I know for them. I'm going to get them two sessions. And if they think that's too weird, then they can pass it along maybe to somebody else that would use it. But lift, lifting, we've seen it change so many people's life and the moniker here at Super Training of lift through it. People seen me use that hashtag before. 
And the reason why I came up with the hashtag in the first place, I've seen people overcome the craziest things. And then they kind of tell me their story of kind of how they got into the gym and how the gym changed their life and changed their view of being raped, of being neglected as a kid, of child abuse, of nearly killing themselves, of this, of that. They overcame cancer. They overcame divorce. They overcame family members' deaths. It's like time and time and time and time again. And we see this with some other things too. I see it with running. You see it sometimes with jujitsu and there's definitely other sports that people attach themselves to and they can get themselves to feel comfortable. But again, I think lifting is special because, and you, you might be able to point to a couple other sports, but it's, it's tough to find them. Anyone can lift and anyone can lift at any point in their life and they can do so until the day they die. And it's hard to say that about other things like football, you know, basketball, like there's just, there's like other little complications in there where, yeah, I guess you can go shoot some hoops kind of forever, but your body's going to hurt and stuff. And, and the only option is to just push the ball up 10 feet and to shove it into a basket. And maybe your shoulder doesn't work the same way, but in the gym, it doesn't matter if your shoulder doesn't work. It doesn't matter if your elbow doesn't. I mean, it matters, but there's so many other options. Mm -hmm. You can train the other arm. You can, you know, do things that train the full body. You can do step ups and squats just because like an upper body muscle hurts doesn't mean you're out. And in jujitsu or something like that, if you have one arm that's kind of gone, it might be frustrating. You might not be able to really defend yourself the way you'd like. And it might be too annoying to like really follow through on some of that. But the gym... The gym is uh, wonderfully set up for the uh, most unathletic people <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and it is set up really nice for um, people that have pain. People that have pain in their knees and their lower back. You could have, again, you can name any ailment. Uh, we know people that are missing legs. We know people that are missing an arm. We know people that are missing a hand. And they're, they go in the gym and they're, absolutely incredible. So that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about the gym. And we oftentimes talk about what it does for your body, but the impact and the power that it has for the mind is going to be something that is going to be solidified in the next 10 years. They're going to keep hammering you with you. They're going to keep hammering it on you over and over and over again, diabetes and uh, Alzheimer's are things that are we're seeing it in more and more people. And what's the recipe for that? The recipe for that time and time again is to lift. Lifting is going to be more powerful than metformin. Lifting is going to be powerful than most of the pharmaceutical drugs that they have that try to shuttle your carbohydrates into your muscle tissue. The glucose disposal agents, the supplements that we have access to, those are all nice options and they can help do that. But you can make your own body efficient at that simply by lifting weights. When it comes to uh, people getting older and sarcopenia, people losing muscle, that's all that people see, but I see something different happening. I see people losing strength. They lose their strength and then they start to lose themselves because they start to lose muscle mass and they start to lose coordination. And they're not able to do the same things they used to do. And they call it sarcopenia. And everyone's all upset that people lose muscle. And their um, strength to weight ratio goes way down. But really, that's what's at play. That's what kills you. Your strength to ratio gets, your strength to weight ratio gets all jacked up as we get older. Not just because you get older. It's because you're not training. You can train yourself around these things. You can train yourself through these things to an exert a certain extent. And I just kind of, I don't want to shame people about working out, but I, I just think like, when did brushing your teeth become a thing and how did it become a thing? Like who, who decided that? I don't know about other countries, you know, I, you know Austin Powers doesn't look like he kept up with brushing his teeth <laughs> enough, you know? So maybe in other countries, maybe it's not as prominent, but here in the United States, Brushing your teeth in the morning, brushing your teeth at night became a thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then also um, going to the dentist like twice a year. 
every six months is, is a thing here in the United States for a lot of people that have like dental care and stuff like that. When are people going to have hygiene with lifting? When is it going to happen? How much evidence do we need? Your body is rotting away the same way your teeth were when we weren't brushing them. So you need to brush up against some resistance training here and there. And it doesn't have to be a lot. You're talking about two or three times a week. Um, you know, you can go as far as three to five times a week if you wanted to. Three to five sets, three to five exercises, a little bit of resistance. You don't have to go to failure. It doesn't have to be that hard. And you can end up with a body that has a metabolism that can respond to the food that you eat in a positive way. And you don't even have to necessarily be like jacked or anything, although that can be some of the results of some of this, but what, what's going to happen when you're, you know, instead of you being 180 and like skinny fat and things like that, you're 190, you got a bicep vein and you, you look like you can take care of yourself. Like you're, when you see that every morning, that's different. That's different than you, you know, being 240 and having like a belly, mm -hmm. you being 190 and like, shit, man, I, I I'm kind of seeing like an ab there. Is that an ab? <laughs> Go run over to your wife. You're like, is that an ab? They're like, no. <laughs> but you're like, well, it was in the other lighting, I think. Yeah. But, you know, it, you're going to be more excited about that. You'll be more excited in that avatar than maybe the current avatar you have now. Absolutely. Power Project family, how's it going? I want to talk to you guys about the best gym fits in the game. You need to head over to Viore. People don't know how to say it. People don't know how to spell it. V-U-O-R-I. But let me tell you something about Viore. They have great clothes that you can wear outside the gym, weddings, lunches, dates. And then they have, <laughs> <laughs> they have great pieces of equipment you can wear in the gym that make you look good while you're lifting. Because I know there's still a lot of y'all who are still rocking and one shorts. And <laughs> Although I have nothing against and one. Gets me every time. I have nothing against and one shorts. Yeah. Honestly, it looks horrible. So Andrew, <laughs> please tell the people how to step up their damn clothing game. For real, you guys got to step up. Head over to viori.com slash power project. That's V-U-O-R-I.com slash power project to receive 20% off your order. Uh, no code needed. You guys will see a uh, discount will be applied at checkout banner across the top. Uh, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So last question for me is, I mean, you've been lifting since you were 12 um, how can people stay connected to the gym? Because you see a lot of people that get fired up and then, oh, what happened to so-and-so? Like, damn, yeah, that's right. I haven't seen them in like mm. two weeks. And then two weeks turns to two months to two years. Damn. So how can somebody who's listening, maybe they're not being too consistent in the gym. Mm. How can they stay connected to where they can become consistent? You got to do stuff that you like to do. You know, observing my own son in the gym and watching him and he just kind of would gravitate towards the same machines he was comfortable with. It was very hard not to go over there and give him some sort of speech about mm -hmm. the proper ways to train and the mechanics of it and this and that. Um, but I learned by watching him and just by being around for a long time that the real key is to do stuff that you like. Things that you don't like, things that you don't want to work on, let them just come to you over time. And maybe there are things that like, you're like, yeah, I probably need to address that. My hamstrings are insanely tight. <laughs> um, I can't squat down even more than like quarter of the way without my form getting weird. Those are all things to think about, but you don't have to necessarily, you know, you don't have to necessarily work on, like people talk about working on your weaknesses. And it's like, that's, that's some decent advice uh, for somebody that's bodybuilding. For someone that's a competitive power lifter, but for your average person, I think just getting yourself to the gym and getting involved in some exercises is, is, a, is a really great accomplishment. I know for myself, I found a couple of things to be really helpful. Uh, number one is music. So here at Super Training, unfortunately, we don't want people wearing headphones because I'd rather have people communicate with each other. But when you're in most commercial gyms or you're at a hotel gym or something like that, crank some nostalgic music, put some music on that you really like and just get moving. Again, motion is the lotion. So once you get yourself moving, you should feel pretty connected to it. You want to try to give yourself good experiences in the gym. Maybe find a good coach or find a good personal trainer 
And if you give yourself enough good experiences in the gym, that should encourage you to stay connected to it more. That should encourage you to stay like tethered to fitness, as I like to say. So you can miss a day or two in the gym. You can miss a week. But when you miss a week, make sure that you still get in a couple walks. Um, when you miss a week, make sure that you're still somewhat tethered to your food. You don't want both things to happen at the same time. But we see that so often that is normally actually what happens. So nothing leads to nothing, unfortunately. Like nothing encourages you to do more of nothing. But more encourages you to do more of more. Like mm. want you want it. You like get hungry for it. Like uh, at a certain point, you need it. You need it. You need to go. You feel like you need to go to the gym. You'll tell your wife, like, I have to go to the gym. And they're like, damn, okay. Then they get all excited and everything because you're being a man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're just going to feel like you, you'll you'll hear people say that. They're saying, oh, man, I think I'm over the hump, man. I I, I feel like I need to exercise uh, more so than I like need a day off. Like a day off is harder for me than actually getting myself to the gym. That takes a lot of time for people, you know, so what I would encourage people to do to figure out ways to stay connected and to not get too far away from their, uh, their workouts is to understand that if, if you start to get inconsistent with it, you're going to lose that good feedback loop that you just worked so hard for. So if you made it in three times a week or three, yeah, three times a week for three weeks, that's that's awesome. And you owe it to yourself to try to keep that loop going. So you made it in three times a week for three weeks, and now you're about to go on vacation. Well, on that vacation, is there a hotel gym nearby? Is there, is your wife in on this? Does she like to lift? Does your significant other like to work out or whoever you're going on this vacation with? If they do have a, have a conversation, say, Hey, babe, I'm down for whatever. We can eat, we can drink, we can, do, but like first thing, whenever we wake up, we can wake up a little bit late. Can we go for like a jog or a walk? I'm sure like whoever you're with doesn't want to just blob out and, uh, <laughs> and just totally be unhealthy and gain a bunch of weight on vacation. That doesn't feel great. Um, and you might gain some weight anyway, just from the food that you have, but you got to kind of plan, you got to always plan these things out and you got to think about it. Um, when I went to Seattle, there's a lot of hills there. So I, I had this stupid thing going on my foot. I had a pretty bad blister. And so I couldn't really run. But I was like, let me just go up a couple of these hills. And up, there was a bunch of areas where there were stairs. Let me go up these stairs. I just went right back down. Went up them, went back down them. Looked at my watch. I did it for like eight minutes. I'm like, there's a workout. You know, like just... Figure out a way to, to get some exercise in. To take it a step further, you might want to try something like Andy Frisella's 75 Hard, where you do something for X amount of days in a row. If you don't want to participate in that, if that feels like it's too big of a thing to bite off, just see if you can start a streak, some sort of streak. You know, can you, can you work out every day for the next two weeks? You know, let's just say 14 days. 14 days of what you would consider pretty good nutrition on a scale of one to 10. You're like a seven or an eight and you work out every day for the next two weeks. Pick one body part, you know, could go in there and train biceps. And next time you could train triceps. Next time you can train shoulders. You can just keep putting out on repeat until the 14 days are over. It doesn't have to be difficult. But if you start to get a streak together like that, it's going to make you feel really good about yourself and you're going to be encouraged to stick with it. Last thing I'll say on this is if you feel like you're falling away from it and you have a hard time with this whole consistency thing, because the consistency is a big part of it, you have to understand that consistency doesn't look the way that you might think it looks. Consistency might mean week one, you go twice a week, you had every intention of going four times, but a bunch of crap happened, you only made it twice. Week two, you were like, man, I got to reset my values. I need to make it a priority. So week two, you go four times in that week. Week three, again, something falls off. You're already kind of tired and fatigued and sore and you overdid your legs the previous week. You only make it in once. 
That's what consistency actually looks like in the real world. It looks all jacked up. But how many times did you make it in the gym before this journey started? Maybe it was zero. Mm -hmm. So now in this past month, you already went like six or seven times. That's what we're trying to look at. Like how many times did you make it in? Like getting these days in a row would be great. But, you know, can you make it in the gym um, 10 times for a month? Make it in 10 times for, for a month, for a handful of months. You'll, you'll end up, you do that for five months. You'll have 50 days of exercise. That's going to equate to something. That's going to equate to you feeling good enough and encouraged enough to do it again. One of the greatest ways to stay connected to it is to find somebody else that has the energy. So recently what I did mm -hmm. is I just started working out with a 21-year-old kid that just loves bodybuilding, Kenny Williams. And you can look at some of the stuff we're doing with anabolic activities. We're starting a podcast and he and I have been lifting together and it's great. I don't, my uh, lifting needs are, are completely done, you know, like just by working out with him because there's nothing else I need to think about. We're, we're bodybuilding, we're pushing it, we're doing sets to failure and so on. So who's the person in your life that likes to work out. Who's the person in your life that you probably have a family member that like owns a gym or knows, knows so-and-so's uncle owns a gym and they probably invite you all the time and you're probably annoyed and you're like, I'm not going to ever go there. <laughs> the guy's an idiot. You can, you can rely on these people and you can lean on these people. If that doesn't feel like much of an option for you, you can also just start asking people in the gym and you could say, Hey man, uh, it really looks like you know what you're doing and I, I'm brand new. Like, could you show me that movement that you're doing for a second? I mean, every once in a while there's some dude with their headphones on. They're like, I'll go to show you some other time. But most of the time, especially if you compliment somebody, they're like, oh sure, dude. Yeah, I'll show you how to do these peck flies or whatever it is. <laughs> they're usually more than excited to show you. So if you don't feel like you have the energy and you have, you got hit by the iron bug just yet. See if you can find somebody else that has. The only hard thing that might happen with that is like, they just might train like a complete lunatic. <laughs> and that might, uh, that might be a little tough, but you can also just tell them, Hey, look, I'm new. I, I'm actually pretty scared. I don't, if you, t if you just tell people flat out, if you just tell them stuff, uh, most of the time people aren't going to be like mean or rude. If someone was to tell that to me and they still wanted to work out with me, I wouldn't be like, Hey man, like that's not intense enough. You can't mm -hmm. work out. I'd be like, that's cool. But what's going to happen is you're going to see the way that I'm working out. You're going to see set after set what I'm doing and you're going to want to pick up the intensity anyway. And you'll end up finding your own intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was incredible, dude. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. We're all out of time. Look at this. I know. Look at that thing. <laughs> so um, for everybody listening, let us know what you guys think about today's edition of Saturday School. And uh, we just we did a, a recent one on um, finding like your torture tolerance, you know, finding the right amount of torture. And I think it's pretty uh, relevant with this conversation. So that'll pop up somewhere on screen. If you're watching us on the YouTube, if you're on iTunes, make sure you guys just click back and uh, check out that episode of Saturday School because it was it was another good one as well. So again, let us know what you guys think about today's conversation. Drop those comments down below. Hit that like button. Those really, really do help out the uh, the podcast in general. And of course, subscribe. Follow the podcast at MB Power Project all over the place. My Instagram is at I am Andrew Z. Uh, Mark Bale, where are you at? You have to really make yourself into. You have to make yourself into something, and, and make is the key word. So you got to get to work on it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that. You literally need to do something physical. Uh, I think it's the shortest route. Um, the, uh, the, the like learning, the, the education of a lot of other things takes a long time. It takes a long time to build up your capacity physically as well, but it might only take like a handful of years, whereas opposed to trying to build up like knowledge to uh, be an expert in something in particular, that you could share out that you can maybe monetize some other time. Like that might take a long ass time, mm -hmm. but just to feel a little bit better about yourself, it usually doesn't come from like doing a book report, you know, unless you're really smart and gifted and the teacher's blown away and they're like, Oh my God, 
but it can come from making your arms a little bit bigger, getting a pump in the gym, lifting a little bit more weight, throwing a football a little further. Some of these physical traits are really important. And for those of you, uh, you know, for those of you seeking and trying to find a significant other and you're like chasing, you won't have to chase, uh, just kind of fall into your lap one day because you're making yourself desirable. Mm -hmm. You're trying to make yourself attractive. And by attractive, I'm not necessarily talking about looking like my boy, John Cena, who's always here on the podcast table. Um, but I am talking about making yourself into a winner. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is through some consistency and through some consistency in the gym in particular, break down that protein, eat some protein, be a bro, gain some muscles, get some chicks. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Catch you guys later. Bye.